Uh, today we are looking at the kidney function and diagnosis and how the kidney functions and what type of disease are involved in when the kidney malfunctions, etc. When the function of kidney malfunctions. So let's begin. So here in this diagram we can see the different parts of the kidney, such as the renal cortex, the medulla, the column, etc. The nephrons. So we'll go into this quite into quite a bit of detail here in the next few slides. So let's have a look at the different types of involved in the kidney. So you have the kidney capsule, also known as a renal capsule, which is composed of three layers of connective tissue or fat which covers your kidneys. This protects your kidneys from injury, it increases their stability and connects your kidneys to the surrounding tissues. <clears throat> you have the renal artery, which is the largest blood vessel which controls blood flow into your kidneys. You have the outer layer of the kidney known as the renal cortex, where nephrons, blood filtering units begin. This also produces erythroprotein, which helps make red blood cells in your bone marrow. And you also have the renal medulla, which is the inner part of your kidney, and it contains most of the nephrons with the glomeruli and renal tubules. The renal tubules are involved in carrying urine to the renal pelvis. You have the renal papilla, which transfers urine to the ureters, and they are pyramid shaped. Um, this can be damaged by dehydration and certain medications such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. You have the renal pelvis, which is funnel shaped and collects urine and passes down the two ureters. Urine travels from the ureters to the bladder where it's stored. You have the renal vein, which is the main blood vessel that carries filtered blood out of your kidneys and back to your heart. Each of your kidneys has a renal vein. You have glomeruli, which are groups of tiny blood vessels which perform the first stage of filtering your blood. They then pass filtered substances to the renal tubules. And this process is known as glomerular filtration. And yet, as I mentioned before, you have the renal tubules, which are tiny tubes which reabsorb and return water, nutrients, minerals, which your body needs, including sodium and potassium. And these tubules remove waste, including excess acid and fluids through a process called diffusion, as we covered in the previous video, diffusion uh, movement of molecules from high concentration to low concentration. Your body sends the remaining waste through your kidneys, collecting chambers, and eventually it leaves your body as urine. The kidney has three main functions, regulation of water, electrolyte and acid base balance, the removal of waste products of protein and nucleic acid metabolism, such as urea, creatinine and uric acid, and the production of hormones such as renin, erythroprotein, and the activation of vitamin D. Renin is involved in blood pressure control and erythroprotein is involved in the synthesis of hemoglobin. So in the next few slides, we are going to be looking at the functional unit of the kidney, which is known as the nephron. So as you can see here, the nephron is composed of glomerulus, Bowman's capsule, proximal tubule, loop of Henle, and the collecting duct. So an ultrafiltrate of the blood enters the lumen of the glomerulus. This is a size similar if, and composition similar to plasma, except blood cells and molecules of the protein greater than 50 kilodaltons are absent, such as albumin because that's 68 kilodaltons. Proteins are prevented from coming through according to their charge as well as size. More negatively charged proteins are retained in the blood. The function of the proximal convoluted tubule is bulk reabsorption of electrolytes from the glomerular filtrate back into circulation. So via active reabsorption, sodium ions 75%, passive reabsorption, glucose amino acids 100%, Carbonate ions 90% following conversion of carbon dioxide, potassium ions 65%, phosphate 80%, and secretion is hydrogen ions and organic ions that are positive and negative. The loop of Henle is responsible for creating a hyperosmolar medulla, which is necessary for the production of concentrated urine. This is composed of a des descending and ascending limb. This extends from the cortex down into the medulla and back up again. It has a countercurrent multiplication system, which means that it allows formation of dilute urine after a water load or allows formation of concentrated urine after water restriction via the action of ADH, also known as antigenetic hormone, or the collecting duct. The convoluted tubule is involved in carrying out what you can essentially say fine tuning of electrolyte reabsorption or secretion, most specifically sodium ions, potassium ions, and hydrogen ions. This depends on the concentration of electrolytes in plasma and under the hormonal control of aldosterone. Part of the functional uh, filtering unit of the kidney, known as the nephron, is the collecting duct. 
and this carries out reabsorption of water. It is naturally impermeable to water. If there is a need to conserve water, antidiuretic hormone is stimulated, such as reasons being low blood pressure or rays of osmolality. This causes aquaporins, also known as water transporters, to move into the impermeable membrane to allow water to pass through. Movement of water is, occurs via passive diffusion, which, un, which occurs under the control of osmolar difference between tubular cells and the lumen, which is created by the countercurrent multiplication system of the loop of Henle. To summarise the components of the nephron, there is a dromulus which filters blood, the proximal tubule which, bulk, which is involved in bulk reabsorption, the loop of Henle which produces osmotic gradients for control of water reabsorption, the dis proximal distal tubule which is fine tuning of electrolytes and the collecting duct which is involved in water reabsorption and excretion. So for a kidney to function properly, it must have an adequate perfusion blood supply, must have a pos partial positive pressure at the glomerulus, must have a viable semi-permeable glomerular membrane, must have a functioning tubular endothelium which is intact, channels transport to gradients, clear passage for filtrate to travel and an appropriate hormonal activity or ability to respond. So here you can see a list of symptoms which are associated with kidney disease, cramping muscles, dark urine or urine with blood in it, foamy urine, itchy dry skin, frequent urination, puffy eyes or swollen ankle and fleet, uh, feet, sleep problems, fatigue and lack of appetite, the reasons being electrolyte imbalances causing muscles to stiffen, damage to your kidneys filters lets blood lead it into your urine, bubbles in your pee indicates excess protein, itchy dry skin is a result of imbalance of minerals and nutrients in your blood, Frequent urination due to filtering waste issues. Puffy eyes due to reduced kidney function, which causes your body to hold on to protein and sodium, resulting in swelling. And a sleep fatigue and lack of appetite due to toxin buildup. And that was why that will be effective, affected. Well, let's have a look at tests involved in testing for kidney disease. So the earliest sign of kidney disease is when you have protein leaking into your urine. And the medical term for this is proteinuria. So you have a dip dipstick urine test, the urine albumin to creatinine ratio test. And so the dipstick urine test is done as an overall part of urine analysis, which is to check pre predominantly for albumin, which is produced by your liver and your urine. It's placed in your sample, and if your levels are above normal, the dipstick changes colour. If you have abnormal protein, uh, abnormal albumin levels, you want to have further tests being run. With regards to the urine albumin to creatinine ratio, this measures the amount of albumin and compares it to the amount of creatinine, which is a waste product that comes from normal wear and tear of muscles in the body in your urine. This lets the doctors know how much your albumin passes into your urine over a 24 hour period. A urine albumin test of less than 30 or above could indicate kidney disease. You have blood tests. So because your kidneys remove waste, toxins and extra fluid from the blood, this will be monitored. As mentioned before, you have serum creatinine, which measures the amount of creatinine in your blood. If your kidneys are not functioning properly, the creatinine levels go up. Normal levels depend on your gender, age, and the amount of muscle, body, muscle mass your body has. And also you have glomerular filtration rate, which measures how well your kidneys remove waste, toxins, and extra fluid from your blood. Your serum creatinine level, age, and gender are used to calculate your GFR number. Like other kidney tests, a normal GFR number for you depends on your age and sex. If your GFR is low, your kidneys are not functioning as they should. As kidney pro disease progresses, your GFR goes down. Over some of this GFR rates, GFR number of 60 or with a normal urine albumin test is a normal. If you have a GRR number, G GFR number less than 60, it means you have kidney disease. If you have a GFR number less than 15, it means your kidneys are failing. If your results show kidney failure, you will likely need a dialysis or kidney transplant. Another test undertaken is a blood urea nitrogen test, which measures the amount of urea nitrogen in your blood. Urea nitrogen is a waste product your body makes from the breakdown of protein in the fluids you eat. Healthy kidneys filter urea nitrogen out of your blood and it leaves you your urine. If your kidney levels are higher than normal, this indicates that your kidneys are not working as well as they should. That means that as your kidney disease progresses, your BUN levels go up. Blood pressure is measured because that's a leading cause of kidney disease and kidney failure. Imaging tests are also undertaken to get an idea of what your kidney looks like to look for damage or problems to see how the blood is flowing to your kidneys if there's any blockage or narrowing in the blood vessels. 
And there's also a kidney biopsy potentially undertaken where a small piece of kidney tissue is removed and examined under a microscope for signs of damaged disease. This is done by inserting a thin needle through the skin. So, put that all into context, the assessment of kidney, kidney function involves three things. Assessment of glomerular filtration, the ability to remove waste. Assessment of glomerular integrity, the ability to select what is allowed to enter the tubules. Assessment of tubular cell function, the ability to secrete or to absorb compounds that respond to stimulation. Ideal markers of glomerular filtration is that they should be endogenously produced, appears in the plasma at a constant rate, freely filtered at glomerulus, not reabsorbed or secreted by the renal tubules, and not eliminated ex externally. So let's take a more look at creatinine. So creatinine is produced at a constant rate from muscle creatinine breakdown. It is not metabolised or excreted from the body other than by the kidney. Very small amount is excreted by the tubules. You can measure its clearance from plasma excretion in urine and is affected by analytical interference, bilirubin, hemoglobin, ketones, glucose and drugs. And just remember guys, drugs are bad. Don't take them, you know, as in like the cocaine type, etc. Don't do that. Yeah, it's very bad. So, looking at serum, serum plasma creatinine, you can take one blood, we can take one blood sample which is convenient, cheap and quick, but it's not sensitive. Serum creatinine only starts to increase above normal when kidney function drops by half. It is affected, as I mentioned previously, by muscle mass, diet, age and sex. So if you look here at the left hand side, the old woman, a small person with a low muscle mass will have a much lower serum creatinine. A bodybuilder with a much, will have a much higher serum creatinine. So looking at urea, this is derived in the liver from amino acids and therefore protein. It is removed by the kidneys, however, if rate of production exceeds the rate of clearance, Plasma concentrations can rise. The rate of the production is increased by a high protein diet, GI bleeds, and increased catabolism due to starvation, sepsis, and tissue damage. Conversely, plasma urea concentration can be low, and this can be due to a low protein diet or pregnancy. In more detail about glomerular filtration rate, what this is, this is an expression of the quantity of glomerular filtrate formed each minute in the nephrons of both kidneys, which is calculated by measuring the clearance of specific substances. Creatinine clearance, estimated GFR, and exogenous markers. Creatinine clearance is more sensitive than plasma creatinine at picking up small changes in renal function. This removes the variables of diet and muscle mass, but it's inconvenient because 24 hour urine correction plus a serum is required. Lots of measurements and calculation, lots of rooms for error. The calculation is creatinine clearance is equal to urine creatinine times by urine volume times by serum creatinine times by time. Estimated glomerular filtration rate is more sensitive than plasma creatinine. This only uses one serum sample in a calculation which is more convenient, but it is not to be used in certain situations such as acute illness, amputees, pregnant women, the very elderly, the obese and malnourished. This uses serum creatinine in formula and is still therefore affected by variations in muscle mass despite correcting for certain variables. And there's a list of other formulas that can be used in, in below, you can see. Also, assessment of glomerular function involves exogenous markers, so in some situations a very accurate GFR may be needed, such as like for kidney donors, pre-dangerous chemo chemotherapeutics. And the examples are, which is inulin clearance, which is a gold standard. This involves infusion of insulin, collection of blood and urine samples, and it involves calculation of inulin clearance. Then you also have CREDTA, which is a standard measure, clinical measure of GFR. So this involves collecting blood samples and using it to calculate estimated GFR from known amount injected and the decrease in activity over time. Looking at the assessment of glomerular integrity, proteinuria involves damage to a glomerulus, which can cause proteins greater than 66 kilodaltons and blood cells to leak through and, and present in the urine. Normal urinary protein excretion is 150 milligrams per 24 hours. With the majority consisting of secreted proteins such as TAM or protein was secreted from tubules. Protein urea is defined as urine protein excretion greater than 3 grams per 24 hours. So in the previous slides before, there's protein urea can be measured via the dipsticks and hematuria, the blood that is present in the urine dipsticks, blood present in the urine. There's also the body measures as well, such as protein creatinine ratio, albumin creatinine ratio, and 24 hours total protein. So albumin is the predominant plasma protein responsible for many physiological functions. It is normally not filtered by the glomerulus due to the increased size 
and the ch net negative charge. Remember how the charge and the size can affect what proteins go through. And looking at the assessment of tubular cell function, this is the ability to excrete an acid load such as urine pH, acid base status, ability to concentrate urine which is osmolality, ability to respond to hormones which is electrolytes, ability to reabsorb solutes, electrolytes and proteins which is urine glucose and urine protein. And finally, taking that into all consideration, let's have a look at kidney conditions. So you have chronic kidney disease which can lessen your kidney function caused by high, high diabetes or high blood pressure, kidney cancer, also, which is the most common type known as xeno cell carcinoma, kidney failure, also known as xeno failure, which can be acute, worsen suddenly, or chronic permanent lessening of how well your kidneys work. End stage renal disease is a complete loss of kidney function. It requires dialysis, treatment to filter your blood in place of your kidneys. You have pyelonephritis, also known as kidney infection, where bacteria can enter your kidneys and travel up your retos. This causes sudden symptoms. You have kidney stones which causes crystals to form in the urine and can block urine flow. Sometimes these stones pass on their own. You have renal cysts, which are fluid-filled sats called kidney cysts, which grow on your kidneys. These can cause kidney damage. Then you have polycystic kidney disease, also known as PKD, which causes cysts to form on your kidneys. This is a genetic condition and it may lead to high blood pressure and kidney failure. A few more conditions, acidosis, excess acid in your kidney, which can be life-threatening, acute or interstitial nephritis, kidneys can become inflamed, sometimes after exposure is set in by antibiotics, lead to kidney failure, azotemia, nitrogenous waste building up in your kidneys, and this can be fatal without treatment, calactasis, excess fluid causes your calyces, where your urine collection begins to swell, without treatment, this can result in kidney failure, diabetic-related nephropathy or hypertensive nephropathy, Undi unmanaged diabetes or chronically high blood pressure can cause kidney damage. Glomerular diseases, which can cause inflammation or damage to a glomeruli, this can cause kidney failure. Minimal change disease and nephrotic syndrome, which can cause your kidneys to release the excess protein in your pee. Papillary necrosis, where the kidneys, chunks of kidney tissue die in the medulla and papilla. The tissue can break off and clog your kidneys, leading to kidney failure. Proteinuria, which means you have high levels of protein in your kidneys, it can be a sign of kidney damage. Pyelonephritis, this sudden kidney infection causes edema, swelling in your kidneys, and it can be life threatening. And the final one, uremia, and toxins that normally leave blood, blood, your body through the pee end up in your bloodstream. Without treatment, ure uremia can be fatal. So I'm hoping this has all been very useful to you guys. Please let me know what topics you'd like me to have a go at next. And leave a comment below. Remember to like, share, subscribe, etc. etc. If you're new, if you're a returning subscriber, thank you very much for joining me once again. I hope you're enjoying the videos. And uh, I look forward to making the next video. So, currently, at this rate, a video has been uploaded every Monday, Thursday. Yeah, so that's when new videos will be uploaded. If you guys have any ideas for topics that you'd like to add, just uh, let me know in the comment section. I'll take that into consideration. Yeah, thank you very much and have a good week. Right, bye bye.